our favorite Hell in a Cell matches. Jeff, we got we got you know CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre coming up. The Hell in a Cell, yes, sir. one of one of my favorite matches. Like, listen, because growing up, I had the the Hell in a Cell you know toy that you know you can do the action <laughs> figure. So me, I was always a Hell in a Cell guy. But what are some of your favorite Hell in a Cell moments? Well, first off, you go call me a Mark if you want. I don't care. Uh, Undertaker, Mankind, Hell in a Cell. He broke him in half. <laughs> threw him off the top of the cage. Where And this is at a time where I'm watching ECW. I'm watching all that stuff. And I still had to clutch my pearls at 98 King of the Ring watching that happen. Right? Like, it was insane to think. And that was just one of the high spots. Then Undertaker choke slams Foley through the cage, tombstones him. He has his tooth through his nose. He smiling, put a, smiling through the pain. Put a hole in his tongue. Like that dude became. He was dilate before dilate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that dude was it, bro. And he set the table. Hell in a Cell would not be Hell in a Cell if it wasn't for that match. Mm -hmm. Right, Shawn Michaels and Undertaker, they were the predecessors of it, no doubt. But it became that gruesome, death-inviting spectacular when Mankind went 20 feet off the cage. One of the greatest stuntmen in the history of wrestling. I, that man, Mick Foley. That's one, of my, that's one of my favorites for sure. I think every like indie promotion that does all those crazy spots has that match to thank. Like whenever you think about all these uh, promotions where they're doing all these high stunts, uh, these high spots and stuff like that, I think that's the rush that they're looking for. That that mankind Undertaker moment. It 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 really like that's not even a, a great Hell in a Cell match of all time. That's one of the like biggest matches of all time Facts. that that took the wwe to the next level like when you really think about it so i definitely agree with that i'm trying to think like besides that one you know the original uh hell in a cell with um undertaker and Shawn michaels and i think wasn't that like the debut of uh kane like he that was the door uh, off? that was michael's undertaker yeah that absolute classic moment and then I feel like Undertaker is just going to have all of the greatest Hell in a Cell. Like Undertaker, Triple H. With Sean as the ref? Exactly. I think that was 28. WrestleMania either, 28. Either yeah. 27 or 28. I mean, it, to have an instant classic at a Mania is one thing. To put it in a Hell in a Cell is a whole nother. Like now you're elevating it. And then they, they all go out and it's like, yo, this is... They just killed each other in this ring. And That's... now look at them. I mean, oh my God. Hell in a cell. You know, now that I think about it, what a get one of one of the best gimmick matches. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And and Undertaker definitely has a spot in a lot of people's top fives, top fives, top matches. But even recently, man, because I was looking up Hell in a Cell matches and when WWE went through that era where every everybody settled beef in Hell in a Cell. That's when it got watered down for me. Because I'm like, damn, your beef isn't even that real. <laughs> that shit ain't smoke. That shit is like a, a, a puff. You know what I mean? Like, I like I don't know what the hell y'all fighting in Hell in a Cell for. It's like, like a, a, it's like a powder. <laughs> you know what I mean? That shit ain't even smoke. It's powder. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I like couple from from this current era roman and jay the i quit match oh yes the the origins of cinema mm -hmm. the origins of bloodline cinema roman's talking his shit bro you know mid-match bro that that match what, what was that what was that hell in a cell hell in a cell um during a COVID year mm -hmm. during the pandemic lockdown year and then of course Cody Seth. Oh. Hell in a Cell. At Wait. the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view 2022 with a torn freaking peck. 
takes Cody the jacket Rhodes off. Cody Rhodes out there and put on a classic, bro. My God. When, when Cody took that jacket off and you hear the whole crowd go, oh, my. The, the collective gasp is, is one of the weirdest sounds I've ever heard, like, from a crowd where bro. everybody is just shocked. I, I swore I heard somebody in back like, oh, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh Yo, my god. Cuz yeah and then he's taking off, he's he's slipping off the jacket slowly. So not even Seth could see what was going on in his chest. And I don't know if they gimmicked it up if they put extra um makeup and stuff mm -hmm. like that to make it look even more purple and horrid, you know what I mean? Like but it 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 had the desired effect. And I think more than anything, it put Seth on the map as a super safe worker, somebody who could deftly wrestle that match with Cody and protect him while still making every move look devastating. No notes, man. No notes. The crowd was invested in in almost an agonizingly watching a car crash happen multiple times live kind of way where you was almost enthralled by the gratuitous violence but at the same time you you knew this was just felt wrong this just felt yeah. wrong watching them fight like at some point you're like yo cody man i you got it you got it we don't want to watch this anymore you feel me but it was so good it was it, so good it was one of those things where even like the people that watch it and they're like oh my god this is fake like even then now you're watching it and you're like how is he going through this right now like, how is he not in agonizing pain? We can see. We can see that you are in pain. Your arms should not look like this. Bro, no part of your body should his, look like this. I, I, he, they probably gave him that thing that they put the hippos to sleep with, bro. He probably <laughs> could have felt half his body, though. He took, he the, was, he took he, the Aaron Rodgers drug. Yeah. He was good. <laughs> That's, Dog, that man took the put me back in, coach. That second half of Dustman came out the blue tent. With the Winter Soldier codes, <laughs> one hundred. Listen, when he's on Joe Rogan in like fifteen years, running for for office somewhere, and he's still and Joe Rogan's like, "Hey, Jamie, pull up that video of of, of <laughs> Seth Rollins' arm." They keep telling me about this, right? And then they breaking it down, and and, and uh, Cody's like, "You know, they just gave me a handful of whatever I didn't even ask, and I put on a match." You know, <laughs> dude, was your my... fucking pet actually tore? That was it, fake. <laughs> Motherfucker, Jamie, pull up a Tesla real quick. Hold on, I need to show. <laughs> if he thinks his arm is strong, let me show him how these windows. <laughs> oh man, crazy! Listen, the 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 new era of Hell in a Cell is. I'm I'm more curious. Like, I want to see what CM Punk and Drew can do now, because I feel like they've done it all. This feud, it's it's a good feud. Don't don't get me wrong. But Triple H loves him a, a, a multi-month long feud. Now, after this, there should be no beef between the two. Like, whoever loses, just dap up the winner and be like, yo, all right, bro. I don't know what else to be mad at you for. We, we've right. put each other through the ringer. You know, so you've done every type of match, every, every uh, you know, every gimmick match and everything like that. Titles have been won. Titles have been lost. Let, listen, have the match, move on. I, yeah, I think the only way, I, I think the only way you get just straight move on is if a third party enters into their beef and takes the attention away from Punk Drew mm -hmm. by engaging with one of them. Like they yeah. have to serve as a distraction. They one of them got to go on a side quest and leave the other one alone. And I thought it would be Seth Rollins, to be honest. And then Seth Rollins came back super fast from, you know, those injuries that it was reported that he had, like, meniscus and stuff like that or whatever right. it was. But I thought, you know, Seth would be able to, to go away for a while and then come back around this time maybe even after Mania because we all saw what his leg was moving around like. You know, he, mm -hmm. that leg was looking like some well, like well done spaghetti. I think it was just flying <laughs> around. But, you know, because we all remember 
when CM Punk returned, Seth Rollins was wilding out. Drew wasn't having it, but Seth Rollins was cursing. He was looking at him. He was talking so much shit at the at the bottom of that ramp. So, excuse me. So I thought, you know, it would be Drew and then Seth right after that, you know, with title implications. But obviously, Seth didn't. Uh, he lost his title, so that wouldn't happen. But we, I still want to know why Seth was in his bag uh, the way he was. Like, Because to be honest, the only person on the main roster right now that that should feel that way about CM Punk is I don't know what you know what Seth and, and CM Punk's beef is about, but Roman Reigns is the only person who could be like, yo, on his way out, <laughs> he talked so much shit about me. It was crazy. So Roman Reigns is you know on the list, and then Ryback is a little bit above Roman Reigns, you know, when it comes to the hierarchy of hating <laughs> CM Punk. But <laughs> we gotta find out. What Seth and CM Punk's beef is all about. Pause, but listening to the black and table. I like your guys' style. <laughs>